Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Brilakis presenting case 257 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating what to do when a microcatheter becomes entrapped within a coronary vessel. The patient was a gentleman with uh, previous coronary bypass grafting who presented with aggressional dyspnea, normal ejection fraction and inferior ischemia, and this is the coronary angiogram showing a CTO of the ostium of the right coronary artery with a patent bypass graft that goes to the distal right coronary artery. However, both the PDA as well as the posterior lateral were occluded. Hence, that's why the patient is ischemic. There is a CTO distal to the touchdown of the saphenous vein graft. The lima to LAD was patent and there was some collateral flow going to the posterior lateral. This is a dual injection from uh, the lima as well uh, as the left main, showing the filling of the right posterior lateral as well as the PDA. There was also an epicardial collateral coming from the left coronary system for the circumflex going to the posterior lateral. So what to do? The patient came back for the procedure and when we performed coronary angiography, we found that the bypass actually had now occluded. So what we have here is an osteal RCA-CTO with a blunt stop. The occlusion is essentially the entire length of the RCA. And then uh, there is reconstitution of the PDA and the posterior lateral through epicardial collaterals. There is no filling through the vein graft now, but there are also some septal collaterals. So our plan here was to first start with the easier potentially tasks, so retrograde through the saphenous vein graft. If that didn't work, go through the epicardial from the left, and then if that didn't work, considering going through the lima, although the threshold for doing that is much, much higher. So we inserted an 8 friends guide extension into the saphenous vein graft, and then advanced a guide wire, which uh, went easily into the PDA. And after doing that, we were able to predilate into the PDA, and that restored some undergrade flow. And then we used a dual lumen microcatheter, a Sasuki, and we were able to advance a Sion black wire into the right posterior lateral. So now we have uh, essentially gained wire access into both the PDA and the posterior lateral, but still it is ideal to not stand in the vein graft, but instead recanalize the native coronary instead. And here is the injection through the saphenous vein graft. We see that we do have flow now into the PDA and to the posterior lateral. So our next step was to try to go retrograde from the distal right coronary artery through the saphenous vein graft to the proximal right coronary artery. This is also an example of the sequential dual guide technique. What we have here is one guide going into the vein graft, another graft going into the left main that we can visualize the right. But now that we have wires there, then we remove the left main guide and we use the same access point to engage the native right coronary artery. We used a supercross microcaster to go retrograde through the saphenous vein graft, but again, we were unable to advance a retrograde guide wire. So after all these failures, we decided to go undergrade. We used a, a Corsair microcaster and a Gladius Mongo that was knuckled and the Mongo advanced well down the right coronary artery. And we were able to get it essentially all the way down to the SVG anastomosis. And this is very useful because now we do have a marker about where is the native vessel in relationship to the saphenous vein graft. We then used the knuckled guide wire which is here, as a marker for our retrograde equipment to try to go retrograde into the proximal right coronary artery. We did try a Gaia next to guide wire, and that seemed to advance along the course of the right coronary artery. So that clarification of the distal cap through the knuckle was very useful for retrograde wire crossing. We then advanced an undergrade guide extension and then performed a guide extension reverse cart and we were able to successfully advance the retrograde guide wire into the undergrade guide catheter. One would think that it would be perfect, so we actually went through and placed an R350 guide wire and externalized it, but then we could not get a turnpike LP to go back. 
And it is just paradoxical because again, we have an externalized wire, great support, but we could not move it back. And why is that? I mean, could it be the bend? Absolutely, there's a lot of tortuosity going um, retrograde uh, through the saffinus vein graft and the distal touchdown. It could be some friction inside between the wire and the microcatheter, but this would not come back. So what to do? We we'll have an example of a microcatheter entrapment. And we'll try the first step, which is to gently rotate it and try to pull it back, which did not work. The next step is to potentially try to get a balloon next to it and then uh, perform balloon inflations and potentially use intravascular lithotripsy in heavily calcified vessels. If this doesn't work, then the next step is to potentially advance a snare of the microcatheter and pull everything out. And if this doesn't work, one can cut the microcatheter, advance the guide extension. Now, we did have a guide extension here, which was pre-placed, but it was hard advancing in retrograde because of the tortuosity. And if all of this fails, then emergency surgery might be required. So what we did is uh, we took uh, another polymer jacketed, a Mongo wire, and knuckled it around the entrapped microcatheter, and then did multiple balloon dilatations, but there remained a waste in the balloon, suggesting heavy calcification. And this is a little better, showing the severe calcification, which might have played a role, although the caster tip seems to be a little more distal to that calcified segment. Nevertheless, we did perform intravascular lithotripsy to, to modify the cap and the, and the plaque. And then we tried to pull back. It was very challenging. But eventually, after quite some time and after multiple attempts, we were able to pull the retrograde um, microcatheter along with the retrograde wire out. And this is what came out. And I think that illustrates the mechanism. The problem was that uh, things were kinked. I think the guide wire that was inside the microcatheter was kinked. And also there was a lot of friction between the wire and microcatheter. So combination of factors, one is wire friction, the other one is uh, bent of the guide wire who doesn't let the microcaster come out. After doing this, we decided to use a microcaster that is a little larger and more supportive. So we used the Corsair and repeated the same steps. We went retrograde. We advanced the retrograde wire into the undergrade guide catheter and externalized. And then we used a dual lumen microcatheter to successfully advance a guide wire into the posterior lateral as well as the PDA. After doing that, we predilated both vessels. And then after removing the retrograde wire, we did place stents all the way from the PDA into the ostium of the right coronary artery, obtaining a nice result with Timothy flow in both PDA and posterior lateral. So this case uh, had multiple challenges and multiple lessons. The first one is uh, that with very diffusely diseased distal vessels, the retrograde approach is often preferred, if, of course, it's technically feasible. The second is that we did have uh, stents along the distal anastomosis of the saphenous vein graft, and this can make it harder going retrograde. But what worked in our case is when we placed an undergrade knuckle, the knuckle served as a target for the retrograde guide wire to cross from the vein graft into the RCA. We had the challenge of equipment entrapment. Our retrograde microcatheter became entrapped, likely because of kinking of the wire and possible because of uh, friction between the wire and the microcatheter. But this was resolved by advancing a knuckle guide wire around the entrapped equipment and then perform balloon angioplasty as well as intravascular lithotripsy. And finally, this is another example of the sequential dual guide technique. We only used two access points, two femoral artery accesses here. Initially, we engaged uh, the vein graft and the left main to guide wiring of the PDA into the posterior lateral. After this was achieved, we removed the left main guide and inserted an amplitude, left one into the right coronary artery, through which the remaining of the PCI was performed. Thank you.